Welcome back. In the last segment, we discussed the second order method for uh, the cosmological problem and also an algorithm based on it. So before the program, let us make a few remarks. So as always, in order to write the program, we should first try and enumerate the important entities. Okay. Now in this program, this program is all about positions, velocities, accelerations. Okay. And these are not entirely simple quantities. So they are actually three dimensional vectors. And since they are important entities, we should use a class for them and luckily we did develop such a class which was our V3 class which we developed some time earlier. So that is exactly what we will use. So instead of, instead of uh, thinking of it as an array of 3 elements or something like that, we will use our V3 class. Okay? And uh, if you remember our V3 class was developed so that we can add 2 vectors together by writing plus or we could multiply a vector by a scalar just by writing star. So that will come in very handy and that will make our code very easy to understand. Okay? And everywhere we would not have to write down loop looping over the 3 components. We can just say u plus v if we want to add vectors u and vectors vector v. Okay, then there were the other the, the major entities from a different point of view I guess are the stars. Well the stars possess the position, velocities and acceleration but the stars are important entities. So clearly we should have a struct. Okay? Now we could create a struct for the entire galaxy as well. So that struct would just contain the array of stars. But here we have chosen not to do this. We will discuss this a little bit later when you have seen the entire program. Okay? But what, what we have said so far is that the entities sort of the physical entities are the stars and inside the stars we will have V3 entities which will represent the positions, velocities and accelerations of the stars. What are the important actions that the program needs to take? Well, first of all of course the program has to read in data. Then it has to calculate the force due to stars on each other. Okay? So this will involve all stars. Then it has to update the position. So what do we need in order to update the position? Well, we should change the velocity of, uh, sorry, change the position of each star individually and for that we need the velocity of that star. So this is a bit of a local operation if we know the velocities of the stars. And similarly we have to update the velocities. So this is also a local operation because if we know the accelerations then the, velo the new velocity of a star depends on its old velocity and its acceleration. Okay? But these will be important actions that we are going to perform and uh, yeah, and we want to show all this on our canvas. So we should actually move things around as well. So that is another important action. So this suggests that suggests what, what uh, functions we should have because we said at some point that if uh, something is an important action then we should make it into a function or a member function. So we will almost do that. Some of these if, the, if something happens to be really tiny okay, then maybe we will just write it directly rather than making it into a function. But yes in general if something is important we should sort of make it have a name in our program and the way to do that is by making it a function or a member function. And then of course there is the main program, okay. we have to say what happens in the main program. Well the main program sets everything up okay. and it also loops over the time steps. So in that sense the main program is kind of a controller, a kind of a choreograph choreographer if you will. So it sort of it sort of sends messages to everyone saying, oh now do the next step of the iteration. Now now that it is over, do the next step and next step and so on. Okay? So that is what our program is going to look like. Basically it is going to follow this outline. 
All right, so, we, so I'm now going to show you the program. I, I'm not going to, so yeah, so I'm going to show you the program and I'll begin with the main program. I'll talk about the function which reads the data, then the function that calculates the forces. I will show you the star class, the class V3. And while doing this, I would like you to observe that really it, the whole thing corresponds to the algorithm that we have discussed. Okay? All right, so let me get out of this. Okay, so here is our main program. So we begin by creating the canvas on which everything is going to be shown. Okay? And uh, then we read in the duration of the simulation, the step size and uh, the number of stars. And then we have a function which will read in the star related information. Okay. So this is the function. So it does not do a whole lot of things. It will read in the values, the mass x, y and z, the positions and the velocities. So these are the initial things that it is going to read. And we are going to have a star uh, array. Okay, so this is it is going to be read into this star array and we are going to initialize each element of that star array using these using these values. Okay, so these three values we are going to convert into a position vector by calling this constructor. If you remember this is the constructor for V3. So this is giving the position vector, this is giving the velocity vector and this is the mass. So it is going to init, it is going to initialize each star. So let us quickly take a look at that because there is something in uh, something that happens in addition over there. Okay. So here is that initialization. Okay. So m v3 r1 v, uh, v3 v1. So these are the positions and velocities. So they are going to be put inside the corresponding members. So v and r are the velocity and position of the star. Okay. So these are uh, these are the data members and mass is also there. So m is going to go into mass. Okay? But we want everything to be seen on the screen as well. So in this construct, this is not a constructor, this is kind of a reset, reset like thing. So it is the initialization thing. So in this initialization, we will actually make this circle appear on our screen by resetting it. And where should it go? Well, it should go at position x and y where x and y are the positions of the star. So the way we have done it is that we have used, we are, we are pretending that our uh, uh, stars are moving in sort of this pixel space. Okay? So after all this is only for a demonstration and so we are not doing any kind of a change of coordinates over here. So this is all pixel space. So pixel coordinate x coordinate we get, pixel y coordinate we get and over there we are going to show the star. So that star is going to appear as a circle and we are going to make that circle be red and filled. Okay? And we will have a pen for it which will go down and it will go down because we want the orbit to be seen as the circle as the star moves. Okay? So uh, yeah, so this is initializing the data part as well as initializing what happens on the screen. Okay, so we read the data that is that is over here, and next we are going to calculate the forces. Okay, so how do we calculate the forces? Well, for that we need the information about all stars, and that is we pass it the array stars. Okay, and we also need to calculate the result in some array called forces. So that is what is going to happen over here. Okay? So in, in the array forces, we will calculate the forces. Okay? So how does that happen? So it is as you might expect. Okay? So we are going to go through every pair of stars and we are going to calculate the mutual force. Okay? So how is the mutual force calculated? Well, we have this function, this member function on a star object. So what this is saying is that tell me the force due to star due to star i on star j. Okay? 
So and tell, tell it to me as a vector or rather tell me the force on star i due to star j and that force we are going to add to the total force on i and we know that by symmetry or by Newton's third law okay, the exactly the equal force will be exerted okay, on star j and so we are going to subtract from it. And notice that these are vectors, remember that these are vectors and this is also a vector and the result of this calculation is also a vector. So this calculation will produce vectors, we are we have overloaded the plus and minus operators, you will see that and you already saw that uh, in an earlier lecture. So that we can just directly add the incremental contribution due to star j on star i and on star i. Uh, uh, star i due to star j. Okay? So, this is the incremental contribution. Okay? And exactly where does Newton's law of gravitation come in? Well, let me show you. So, this is where it comes in. Okay? So, this r is the distance, okay? but distance expressed as a uh, the distance expressed as a vector. Okay? So, this is r j. Okay? So, the other minus r r i if you look at our formula okay and that is the vector distance and that is so so our formula says it's uh, the vector distance times the gravitational constant which we are taking as one here okay and times the mass times the two masses divided by the power of the distance to the cube because we already have a distance term over here in the vector in the vector part okay so this is again exactly like what we had in the slides so we have calculated the net force so going back to the main program so once we have the net force why did we calculate the net force well if you remember we need to have the velocities at time step delta by 2 so if you remember when we started things off we wanted the positions at time step 0 and velocities at time step delta by 2. So we got that by a first order update. So what was that first order update? Well, we are going to take the original velocity of each star and to that we are going to add acceleration times delta by 2. Okay? But here we have forces. So in this member function, we will convert the forces into accelerations and add them. So let us see that. Okay, so, there is this velocity step that I am going to show you. Okay, so, V step says that you had an original velocity, to it you are going to add the force divided by mass which is the acceleration and whatever time displacement you want, okay, how much, how, by how much ever you want to advance. So, in this particular call we are advancing everything by delta by 2 because we started off with all the data at 0 and we wanted the velocities to have been calculated for delta by 2. So this gives us at the end of this we will have velocities at t equal to 0 0.5 delta and positions will be at t equal to 0 okay, because that is what we started off and we have not modified the positions. Then there is the main loop. Okay. So, how long does the loop run? Well, exactly as before, it goes from 0 to t upon delta okay, and in increment of delta. So, here we are going to calculate, okay, we are going to update the position. Okay. So, this is this update is what we are calling an r step and this time we are going to advance the position by the full delta. Okay. So, therefore, the argument that we give to this is delta. So let us see this R step. So we are passing the duration and that duration is going to be multiplied by V. Well, what is V? So V is just the velocity velocity of this star. Okay? So remember the velocities are kept along with the stars. So see this as a part of the star, the velocities are kept there itself. Okay, oh. okay? So in the V step, this velocity that is there with the star, uh, we are taking and we are getting the acceleration and that is got by uh, F divided by mass and then we are multiplying it by the duration. 
ok. In this case delta was passed. So, this is just saying a times delta ok, v equal to v plus a times delta that is what this is ok. So, we have come to this point, we have updated the the, the positions the, the, the positions and we have updated the velocities and yeah so before we up, uh, update the velocities we need to of course calculate the forces. So, it is exactly the same force calculation function ok and uh, we updated the velocities and then this iteration has to happen as many times as needed. So, if you want to advance time by t it has to happen t by uh, delta times ok. So, that is it. So, at the end of it we are just putting a get click over here just so that the at the end the display does not vanish right away. So, the vector class is pretty much like what we had before except that we have added a minus because we had it we had to subtract two vectors. So, therefore, we have added this ok. And uh, oh we have so ignore this line this line is not really needed ok this is somewhat complicated this is these this is described in the book. And this is a way to allow the class to be printed, but do not worry about it. I should I should really remove this line, ok. Alright, so that is the vector class, and so now you can see that we have the vector class, we have the star class, and we have these two functions, and we have the main program, ok. So let us compile it. And we are supposed to type in all the data about the stars. So, let me show you two pieces of data that I have. So, one piece is the model of a sun and the earth. So, let me type that out first ok. So, what has happened over here is that I am asking uh, time to go up to 30,000 ok and my step size is 10. So, this is the mass these three things are the initial position and these three things are the velocities ok. So, one is 400 one has uh, velocity uh, one has mass 400 times the other. So, really you can think of this as the sun and this as the earth if you like ok. Ok, so let me run this and I want to take this as my input. So, I will just redirect uh, redirect this file as standard input and let us see what happens. So, that is the sun and this is the earth which is rotating around it ok. And uh, you will see that it traces pretty much the same uh, uh, the same orbit it does not really diverge. So, despite numerical uh, errors in numerical calculations and things like that this is pretty good ok. So, um, uh, yeah I could have put in more planets in fact in the demo that I had showed that I, on the very first day of uh, class you have this exact this exact program was used and over there I had many planets orbiting the sun ok. So, you can go back and look at that demo as well. But here today I want to show you something else which is quite interesting. So, let me t show you the data first. Ok, so here, here I'm, I have 30,000 steps again with 10 being the step size and there being 3 bodies ok. So, the chord they are all of mass 100, so they are basically all equal and these are the coordinates and velocities. Now, the, the positions and the velocities have been calculated very cleverly ok. So, this is what some astronomers did this is this, this has been taken from uh, the internet ok. So, these positions and velocities have been taken from the internet and uh, the, these were calculated by some astronomers and the interesting thing about these uh, positions and velocities are that you will see that the attractive force is such that the bodies will describe a very strange looking orbit. Okay. So, let us see that. So, I am going to give it this 3 body data. Okay. So, this is what this is what uh, the stars do as they are moving under 
gravitational force. Is not it strange that they should that first of all three bodies should trace such an orbit they are sort of following each other. But you can see that they are actually that they may be gra uh, doing this because of gravitation ok. Because ju just think about say this at this point this thing which is in the middle is being dragged by the two others and therefore they are staying staying in this ok. So, this is a curiosity but it goes to show that our code is actually correct. This is behavior that should be expected for these initial velocities and positions and masses ok. So, what did we discuss in the last segment? Well, we discussed a program based on the second order method and uh, in the next we are going to conclude, but we will take a break before that.